By the end of season two, the relationship is in serious danger of, of being incredibly fractured, simply through Catelyn's actions of releasing Jaime Lannister, the Kingslayer. And that idea was planted in her mind by Littlefinger, who is an old childhood friend and uh, was considered a p member of her family. And for Catelyn to be betrayed by Littlefinger in that, asp in that way is incredible. You know, she's... She, got, you know, she would never treat another human being like that. But again, that is another, that's another block in her, in in her foundation of learning again, because she's had to evolve that, that right. Even though you pretend to be honourable and, and respectful of my family, you would still stick a knife in my back. So she, you know, you can't trust these people. You can trust nobody, and not even family. So she's learning constantly, and. Um, and they're, they're not easy lessons, but she's, she's getting there. Initially, her goal is to, at the end of season one, it's, you know, she said, we will kill them all. It is revenge that's motivating her and the, uh, getting her family back together again. But as things keep occurring and happening to Catelyn, and she keeps evolving and changing, she, you know, her reasons for attaining these goals change too. And you know, it could, you know, Rob sends her off as an envoy. She doesn't want to be an envoy, but she will do that as a means to an end. So that means then, when she's done that, she can go back to Winterfell to be with Bran and Rickon. You know, so she's playing a game as well. You know, she knows that she is needed, but there, it, these are deals that she can broker as well. But unfortunately, they're never what they seem. Nobody is what they are, what they seem in this series, and if they if they do, if they are, then they are not to be trusted. Because in order to survive in this world, you have to adapt. So they're they're chameleons. They have to they have to morph. They have to change. It's Darwinism, you know, at its best. And um, and it is for survival. It's a very cruel world, and it's life is incredibly cheap, and especially women's lives in this world too. So they have to adapt very quickly, they have to be incredibly clever, they have to be really good uh, at, at uh, tacticians, they now have to play games, they also have to sort of pretend to be one thing but underneath uh, they are something else, they're like the duck on the water, calm on the surface and the legs going crazily underneath. So, you know, so there are many facets to these characters, uh, many, many facets and it depending on where they are at what point in their journey, it's, it's the, the different um, characteristics shine through. There are characters, I, you know, you love to hate. You know, I think Joffrey's treatment of women is atrocious, and, um, but I know Jack Gleason and he's the loveliest, gentlest boy ever. And the fact that he creates a monster like Joffrey is testament to his ability as an actor anybody that mentions him, you know, his, it's testament to his, his, his acting, you know, they totally believe. And George has given Joffrey no compassion at all, <laughs> you know, he is a monster, you know, and, um, and he's a character that you want to see get his comeuppance, absolutely. Oh, just please watch it because it's absolutely wonderful and I really hope they enjoy it. And don't try and find out what happens, just let it happen every week in your room or on your computer, wherever it is you watch it. And, and just love it because it, I think it's the best yet. It's fantastic.